You've got questions. We've got answers. We have them in to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. It is good to be with you as always, Bob. It's good to have the Buckinghammer with us because I've got a question in my inbox. It goes like this. How should I go about deciding whether to leave my 401k with my former employer, roll it over into an IRA, or roll it over to my new employer's 401k? Ooh, this is a good question. In fact, this is probably one of the most common questions uh, that I receive and advisors see on a regular basis. And I think it's also one of the questions that doesn't get the sort of respect it deserves. Oftentimes, people simply look at what are my investment choices in my current account and what are my investment choices elsewhere. And while that is certainly a major part of the decision of whether you should roll over or not, uh, either leave it in the current plan or move it to an IRA, there's a lot that goes into it. In fact, there may be as many as six possible decisions to choose from, right? You could leave it in the plan. That is a choice to do nothing. You could roll it to a new plan if that's a possibility. You could roll it to an IRA. You could take a lump sum distribution. Most of the time, that's not good, but things like NUA, for instance, may qualify, could be good. Uh, you could do a Roth IRA conversion, and you could potentially do an in-plan Roth conversion. So we've got six different options that may be available, uh, either in some combination or some cases, all of them to an individual, and they each have different benefits and drawbacks. So we could, Bob, very easily spend the next hour and a half talking about this. And in fact, uh, I do. <laughs> I have presentations where I, I speak to financial advisors and CPAs, and we walk through each of these issues more granularly. And we will spend an hour and a half, two hours just walking through this. But at a high level, let's just focus on, let's say, some of the things that you should consider while you're making this move. So the first one is certainly the investments. We know that that's an important thing. Uh, but also, what are the fees, right? What are the what are the charges in different sorts of accounts? Uh, what are you hoping to accomplish? So simplicity can be accomplished by combining accounts, either in a new employer's uh, plan or perhaps in an IRA, whereas maybe you want to have accounts uh, where they are today because you just don't want to deal with it. I don't know that that's generally a good reason to do things, but I get it. People are busy. And sometimes, particularly if you've got a new job, uh, you may have other things on your mind. Uh, looking at simplification of RMDs, if you have all your money in IRAs, RMDs are pretty simple. If you've got money in different plan accounts, it can become much more complex or complicated, rather, to keep track of all those things. Creditor protection can vary not only between a plan and an IRA, but could even vary between different plans. For instance, maybe you've got a 401k at one employer, but you're going to work for a nonprofit at another company that has a 403b. Those may have different sorts of creditor protection. Uh, we want to look at spousal protection. So in a 401k or an ERISA covered plan, spouses typically have certain rights that they may not have in other sorts of plans. So there are just a litany of issues. Uh, IRAs, you can't take a loan from. A plan, you can. IRAs can invest in life insurance. A plan can. IRAs, you don't have to have withholding. Plans, you generally do. So, I mean, there, we could keep going on and on and on and on, but it really goes to show that it's not just a high-level investment decision. Maybe some of these other things aren't that important to you, but maybe they are. And so the very first thing to do is to really understand how many different things can be affected by a decision to roll over or not. Hmm. So it sounds like you might need some help. And I understand that the Labor Department has put in some guidelines around what advisors can and cannot do with respect to advice versus, say, education. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. So at a high level, what we're seeing over the last uh, decade or so is really a movement in the financial services industry to view rollovers themselves as transactions that financial advisors are responsible for. So historically, kind of advisors have been able to say, or financial professionals, they've been able to say, hey, you know, um, I recommended a rollover, but the investment was good, right? Or uh, the new rules effectively look at your rollover and your choice to invest as two separate decisions. First, was the rollover itself worthwhile? Even things, another one we didn't talk about, 10% penalty issues. That could be different depending upon whether you roll over to a plan or leave your... So all of these things have to be looked at in aggregate to determine whether the rollover itself 
is uh, in someone's best interest. And then there's a second rule that says, well, is the investment okay as well? That at a high level is the simplest way to look at this, is that historically where it was just one transaction to look at the investment, it's now a, uh, a more robust requirement that financial professionals have the rollover be in the best interest as well as the investment. Mm. Well, um, I thought it was going to be a complicated question and a complicated answer. And I think I got all of that. (laughs) (laughs) It was a complicated question and a complicated answer. All right. Well, maybe folks can send us some more complicated questions, too. Well, yes, we love uh, complicated questions. We love easy. We love all questions, really. So if you've got one for Bob and I, uh, give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your questions real soon. 